You've probably seen the blockbuster San Andreas by Dwayne Johnson. Pretty thrilling, right? But what if I told you reality could be just as intense? California sits on a seismic time bomb known as the San Andreas Fault. This fault line, stretching 750 miles through California, is no Hollywood fiction. It's a geological fact. Over millions of years, the region's slow but relentless movement of tectonic plates has built up immense pressure along the fault. When this pressure is released, it results in powerful earthquakes. California has experienced many such earthquakes in the past, and geologists now agree that another significant quake, the big one, is inevitable. The question now is not if, but when. In today's video, we will delve into the history and science of the San Andreas Fault, examine past earthquakes, and explore what experts predict for the future. So stick around to find out. Overview of the San Andreas Fault The San Andreas Fault is a massive, complex fault line that runs through California, extending approximately 750 miles. This fault line is a crucial boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, making it one of the most significant geological features in the world. It starts from the northern end of the Gulf of California, slicing through major regions such as Southern California, the San Francisco Bay Area, and stretches along the coast into Northern California. Geologists have divided the San Andreas Fault into three main segments, each with its own unique characteristics and seismic behaviors. The southern segment runs from the Salton Sea to the Cajun Pass near Los Angeles. This section is particularly concerning for scientists because it has not experienced a major earthquake in a long time leading to the buildup of significant tectonic stress. The lack of recent seismic activity in this area suggests it might be due for a substantial quake in the near future. The central segment of the fault, which extends from the Cajun Pass to Park Field, behaves differently. This section is known as the creeping segment because it experiences a slow and steady movement of the tectonic plates. This gradual motion helps to release stress more regularly, reducing the likelihood of large, sudden earthquakes. However, this doesn't mean the area is entirely safe, as smaller quakes can still cause significant damage, and there's always the potential for larger events. The northern segment stretches from Park Field through the San Francisco Bay Area and up to Cape Mendocino. This part of the fault has a history of producing significant earthquakes, including the infamous 1906 San Francisco earthquake. The seismic activity in this region is more sporadic, with long periods of relative quiet punctuated by powerful and destructive quakes. Given the dense population and critical infrastructure in the Bay Area, this segment poses a substantial risk to millions of people. With the fault segments mapped out, let's travel back in time to when San Andreas first caught the eye of science and changed our understanding forever. Historical Context Now, the discovery of the San Andreas Fault dates back to 1895, when Professor Andrew Lawson of UC Berkeley first identified this significant geological feature. His initial studies revealed the fault's extensive reach through California, but it wasn't until the catastrophic 1906 San Francisco earthquake that the true extent and importance of the San Andreas Fault were fully understood. On April 18, 1906, at 5.12 a.m., the city of San Francisco was rocked by a massive earthquake. The ground shook violently, causing buildings to collapse, roads to split open, and fires to break out across the city. The quake, which is estimated to have had a magnitude between 7.7 .7 and 8.3, lasted for about a minute and a half to over two minutes. This event marked one of the first major earthquakes that hit an industrialized urban center, bringing unprecedented destruction. In the aftermath of the earthquake, Professor Lawson conducted extensive investigations and concluded that the San Andreas Fault was responsible for the disaster. His studies showed that the fault was not confined to Northern California as initially thought, but extended all the way into Southern California. This realization was crucial as it highlighted the fault's potential to cause widespread damage across a much larger area than previously understood. The 1906 earthquake resulted in approximately 3,000 deaths and left over 300,000 people homeless. The fires that followed the quake fueled by broken gas lines and exacerbated by lack of water due to damaged pipelines destroyed nearly 90% of San Francisco. The estimated financial cost of the disaster was around $8.86 billion in today's dollars, making it one of the most expensive natural disasters in U.S. history. From its historical unveiling, the fault line has not been quiet. Let's look at some of the other tremors that have rocked California since. Other major earthquakes in the region. 
Fast forward to October 17, 1989, when the Loma Prieta earthquake struck the San Francisco Bay Area. With a magnitude of 6.9, this earthquake was not as strong as the 1906 quake, but it still caused significant damage. The shaking lasted for 15 seconds, leading to the collapse of buildings, bridges, and highways. One of the most notable incidents was the collapse of a section of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge and the Cypress City Street Viaduct in Oakland. The Loma Prieta earthquake caused 63 deaths and left thousands injured. The financial cost was also substantial, with damages estimated at around $6 billion. The Northridge earthquake, which struck on January 17, 1994, in the Los Angeles area, was another major seismic event. With a magnitude of 6.7, it caused the ground to shake for about 10 to 20 seconds. Despite being of a lower magnitude than the Loma Prieta earthquake, the Northridge earthquake caused more extensive damage due to its proximity to densely populated areas. It resulted in 57 deaths, injured thousands, and caused widespread destruction to buildings, freeways, and infrastructure. The financial impact was staggering, with damages estimated at over $40 billion. This earthquake highlighted the vulnerability of urban areas to seismic activity and the necessity for stringent building codes and emergency preparedness measures. While past earthquakes have been devastating, they pale in comparison to what might be coming. The Big One In recent years, seismologists have been studying the fault line for decades and have determined that a significant quake is overdue, particularly in the southern section of the fault, hence the term the Big One. The southern segment, as we had mentioned, which runs from the Sultan Sea to the Cajun Pass near Los Angeles, has not experienced a major earthquake in over 150 years, leading scientists to believe that stress has been accumulating to dangerous levels. Predictions for the big one estimate that it could reach a magnitude of up to 8.2 on the Richter scale. An earthquake of magnitude 8.2 would release so much energy, resulting in intense shaking and a broader area of impact. The shaking from such an earthquake could last for several minutes, causing severe structural damage, landslides, and widespread fires. Scientific expectations for the big one include not just the immediate damage from the earthquake itself, but also secondary effects that could exacerbate the situation. One major concern is the potential for fires, similar to those that followed the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which caused more destruction than the quake itself. During an earthquake, gas lines can rupture, electrical systems can short-circuit, and industrial facilities can be damaged, all of which can ignite fires. The shaking can also knock over water heaters and other appliances, leading to further gas leaks and fires. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake is a stark reminder of this danger. Although the earthquake caused significant damage, it was the ensuing fires that devastated the city, destroying nearly 90% of San Francisco. Modern studies estimate that a major earthquake in Southern California could result in up to $65 billion in fire-related damages. This figure takes into account not just the initial fire outbreaks, but also the spread of fires due to the inability of fire services to respond effectively in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake. Roads and bridges may be impassable, water mains might be broken, and communication systems could be down, all of which would hinder firefighting efforts. The dry and hot conditions that often prevail in Southern California further exacerbate the risk. Wildfires are already a common problem in the region, and the additional fires sparked by an earthquake could quickly grow out of control. Urban areas where buildings are close together would be particularly vulnerable to rapid fire spread. Another critical aspect of the big one is the expected impact on densely populated areas. Southern California, particularly the Los Angeles metropolitan area, is home to millions of people and includes vital economic centers. The disruption of daily life, business operations, and the overall economy could be catastrophic. Emergency services and healthcare facilities would be overwhelmed, and the recovery process could take years, if not decades. Southern California is also a critical hub for the national and global economy, with key industries such as entertainment, technology, and logistics. Disruptions to these industries could have far-reaching effects, leading to significant financial losses beyond the immediate damage estimates. The ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, essential for international trade, could be severely impacted, causing a ripple effect through global supply chains. According to a USGS study conducted in 2008, a significant earthquake in Southern California could result in approximately 1,800 deaths and over $200 billion in damages. 
These estimates highlight the potential for widespread destruction and loss of life, underscoring the urgent need for preparedness and mitigation efforts. So, how do we prepare for a threat of this magnitude? Preparedness and Mitigation California has long been at the forefront of earthquake preparedness, driven by its frequent seismic activity and the ever-present threat of the big one. The state has implemented a range of strategies aimed at reducing the risk and impact of earthquakes on its residents and infrastructure. One of the key components of California's preparedness efforts is the strict building codes that mandate earthquake-resistant construction. Buildings, bridges, and other structures must adhere to rigorous standards designed to withstand significant seismic events. Retrofitting older buildings is also a major focus, with state and local governments providing incentives and resources to encourage property owners to upgrade their structures. The state has also invested heavily in early warning systems. The Shake Alert system, developed by the U.S. Geological Survey and several universities, provides real-time alerts to residents and emergency services when an earthquake is detected. These warnings, even if they come just seconds before the shaking starts, can give people crucial time to take cover turn off utilities, and stop dangerous activities, thereby reducing injuries and fatalities. Public awareness and education are essential to California's earthquake preparedness strategy. The state conducts regular public information campaigns to ensure that residents know what to do before, during, and after an earthquake. Schools, businesses, and community organizations frequently participate in earthquake drills, such as the annual Great California Shakeout which simulates a major earthquake and helps people practice their response. Emergency planning is another critical element. Local governments and emergency services have detailed plans in place for coordinating response efforts, including search and rescue operations, medical care, and the restoration of utilities and infrastructure. These plans are regularly updated and tested through simulations and drills to ensure they remain effective. So, what do you think about the looming threat of the big one? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more engaging content like this.